Good morning, students. Um, today we are going to talk about the basics of fractions. Now, for the majority of you, this is going to be a complete review. This is maybe one of the very few videos that I will tell you. You may not need to watch twice because most of this should be very common knowledge and very, very already ingrained into your mathematical knowledge. So if this is a video that you're already seeing based, based on what's on the screen that you don't think you're gonna need to watch twice because you have a pretty good understanding, um, I will say that that's totally cool. Um, I will say that this video was probably gonna be a little bit longer than our usual videos. Um, I try to keep videos 10 minutes or less. This one might go over 10 minutes. It might be closer to like, 12, 13, I'm gonna to try to keep it in the 10 minute range, but I'm just forewarning you, this video might be a little bit longer, but that's okay. If you feel confident in what we're doing, um, there's no need to watch it twice. Um, there's gonna be five things that we're gonna go over in this video. So when it comes to your notebook page setup, um, what I would like for you to do, you can see on the screen here, we kind of have four sections, but there's also going to be a section here at the bottom. So what I would suggest you do for right now is you split your page into about thirds. So like two lines that kind of split your page into thirds horizontally. And then with the first two sections, like how you see here on the screen, split those in half. So it makes four sections. So go ahead and set up your page like that. And then what I'll do is I will zoom in to each kind of section and I'll give you moments to pause so you can write down what's already there. So go ahead and split your page into the sections. Okay, so now I'm going to zoom in and um, the first thing we are going to talk about is we are going to talk about the greatest common factor and the least common multiple. So if you want to go ahead and take a moment to pause and title these sections as well as write down the, the definition of what these things are. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about the greatest common factor first. So based on the definition, the greatest common factor are numbers that multiply together that make a number. That is what is called a factor. So factors are number that multiply together that make a number. So for example, six times two is 12. So six and two are factors of 12. Okay. Um, sometimes what's going to be important later on is uh, we're going to have to find the greatest common factor. We're actually going to use it a little bit later on this page. So if we're given two numbers, let's say we're given the number 12 and 100, okay? Um, if I asked you to find the greatest common factor of those two numbers, I'm asking you to find a factor that they both share, and I want you to find the biggest factor that they share. So one way to do this is to make what's called a factor chart. List out all the numbers that, when you multiply them together, make the specific number. So for example, six and two make 12. There's also four and three and 12 and one. Um, when we, uh, if we look at a hundred, I think that's all the factors of 12. Um, yes, it is. I'm just thinking in my head. Okay. If we do a hundred, we could do like one times 100. We could do two times 50. We could do four times 25. Um, and we can also do 10 times 10. That's the other one I'm missing, okay? So these are all the factors of 12 and 100. The greatest common factor is the biggest one that they share. So if I look at ones that are similar in both lists, I see that they both share one. I see that they both share two. They both share four. And that that's it. So out of the ones that they share, four was the biggest number that they share. So we would say that the greatest common factor is four or the GCF. That's how we abbreviate it. The greatest common factor is four. We use greatest common factor when we simplify fractions. So when we talk about that um, in the last part of this video, um, we're going to kind of refer back to this greatest common factor uh, situation. Okay. The next situation uh, is something that's called a least common multiple. This is going to come into play in the next few video videos when we talk about our fraction operations, when we work with fractions. So a multiple is a number that can be divided by another number without a remainder. Another way to think about it is if I were to give you two numbers, such as let's do six and nine, 
A multiple is also like if I counted by six, if I counted by nine, I'm creating a list of multiples for that number. So for six, like we could do six, 12, uh, 18, 24, 30. If I'm counting by six, like this whole list that I'm making right here, those are called multiples because they're multiples of six. If we count by that number, if I make multiples of nine, we have nine, 18, uh, 27, and let's just go to 36. Okay, so these are all the multiples of nine. So when you're asked to find the least common multiple, you are looking for the smallest multiple that both of the numbers share, or it could be three numbers. They could give you three numbers and say, find the least common multiple between these three numbers. So um, if we look at the list we just made, 18 is the smallest multiple that these two numbers share. So we would say the least common multiple or LCM is equal to 18. Um, least common multiple is going to come into play when we have to find common denominators when we add and subtract fractions. All right. The next thing we're going to talk about in this video is when we convert between mixed and improper fractions. That's an important skill that we are going to have to use to help us simplify and set up our problems. So go ahead and take a moment to pause and kind of set up these two sections for what you see here. All right. So um, let's talk about how we convert between mixed and improper fractions. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we convert mixed numbers to improper fractions. So I gave you the uh, mixed number of four and one fifth, and you'll notice a mixed number is a number that has a whole number and then a fractional part. It's mixed. It has a whole and a fractional part. So if we were to represent that visually, we would have four holes and then one fifth of another whole. This is what it looks like. So if we were to break this down into how many fifths is this, uh, what we would do is if we have the visual, we could count up, you know, how many slices do we have shaded in? But the trick when you just have the mixed number, if it looks like this, um, the trick is we multiply our denominator times the whole number, and then we add the numerator and all of that is going to be equivalent to how many fifths are in this mixed number. So we're going to keep the denominator the same. We're looking at how many fifths that is. So four times five is 20. 20 plus one is 21. So there are 21 fifths uh, in four and one fifths. So four and one fifth is equivalent to 21 fifths. Or like think about it this way. If we had four and one fifths pizza, that's equivalent to 21 pieces of pizza that are all the, you know, in the shape of a fifth. Okay. Um, now here's something new. What if I threw a negative sign out here in front of negative four and one fifth? Okay. You would think, oh, okay. Now I have to do when I go down here. Now, what I have to do is four times, uh, I'm sorry, five times negative four, which is negative 20 plus one, which is like negative 19. No. OK, this negative applies to the entire mixed number. OK, so negative four and one fifth is equivalent to just and I'm just going to put this down here. OK, is equivalent to just negative twenty one fifths. OK, this is the negative version. Negative. I'm just going to put neg for negative. OK, the negative applies to the entire mixed number. So don't get it twisted when you are converting a negative mixed number into an improper fraction. Simply convert the mixed number into an improper fraction like you would a positive one and then just attach a negative sign at the end to it. OK, so that's the difference. Um, it's just the improper fraction is going to be negative. All right, let's look at the opposite. They give us an improper fraction and we have to convert it back to a mixed. Now, the good news is um, when I have you input your answers or when you have to solve problems in our class and on tests, even on STAR, I am not going to ask you to convert your improper fractions back into mixed numbers like for your answers. I will ask you to simplify it as much as possible. So like 30 over four can simplify to like 15 over two, um, but I'm not gonna ask you to put it into a mixed number. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's important to know the skill though, because 
it may be helpful later on, but just know that I'm not going to ask you to convert impropers to mix really that much if that ever. Okay. So 30 over four is equivalent to 30 divided by four. We talked about this um, a little bit when we uh, were looking uh, at different kinds of numbers when we were talking about rational numbers. So um, this is equivalent to this division problem, 30 divided by four. So if we solve this division problem, we're trying to figure out how many times can four go into 30 and what's our remainder? Well, four can go into 30 seven whole times uh, and seven times four is 28. So that means 30 minus 28, there's a remainder of two, right? So the way that we would write this as a mixed number is we would say seven and two fourths. There's two out of four remaining, which if we simplify this, which we'll talk about simplifying fractions in a moment, uh, that's seven and a half, okay? So converted 30 over four is equivalent to seven and one half. And all we really have to do is division and we use the remainder as the uh, fraction part of the mixed number, all right? The last thing we are going to look at is simplifying fractions. So in the bottom third of your page, um, you can title it simplifying fractions um, and you can put these two problems. Go ahead and pause. Okay, so when we talk about simplifying fractions, we're gonna refer back to the greatest common factor. Um, when we simplify fractions, the reason why we do this is to work with smaller numbers. Smaller numbers make our lives a lot way easier, right? It's way easier to add two plus two than it is to add two plus 2,472, okay? Um, so when we simplify fractions, we're putting them into smaller numbers so they're easier to work with. So we're gonna use the greatest common factor to simplify our fractions. So um, when I look at the problem 80 over 12, I am gonna ask myself, what is the greatest common factor between 80 and 12? And if it's not something that we know off the top of our head, we can go make factor charts for 80 and 12, just like how we did up here with 12 and 100, okay? The greatest common factor of 80 and 12 ends up being four. So if I divide both of these numbers by four, this fraction can simplify to 20 over three, and it cannot be simplified anymore. When we simplify, we always wanna to try to find the greatest common factor because we don't wanna to have to keep simplifying over and over again. If we can find the greatest number, then we only have to divide and simplify it once, okay? Let's look at um, the next one, four over 144. Well, the only factors of four really are one, two, and four, and all of those go into 144, so that means four is also going to be the greatest common factor of this problem. So four divided by four is just going to be one and 144 divided by four is going to be 36. So sometimes what happens is one of our numbers, whether it's the numerator or whether it's the denominator is the greatest common factor. And we can just divide by itself and we'll end up with one as either the numerator or denominator, depending on which one it is. Um, and that's totally okay. So you'll notice both of these are now simpler fractions. Um, if we were to like add, subtract, or work with them, it's a lot easier than having to work with like triple digit numbers in fractions, okay? Um, I would make sure with all of these situations that you always check your answers, okay? Always double check and make sure that you did your division correctly. Always double check up here and make sure you did your division correctly and so forth. Um, so at this point, this is the end of our fraction basics. So we talked about simplifying fractions, mixed to improper, as well as greatest common factor and least common multiple. Um, if there's a section that you feel like you're still a little bit confused about, you can rewind the video and rewatch that section. Um, here are your practice problems. You have four of them. Let me zoom in a little bit. So go ahead and take a pause and write them down. All right, your practice questions for this lesson are, find the greatest common factor of 75 and 350, find the least common multiple of 4, 15, and 90, convert negative 15 and 1 15th, um, convert it to an improper fraction, and then simplify 42 over 8. If you have any questions, please make sure you write it in the need to ask section, and everybody have a terrific day.